Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching The Factoid. So, national personifications have always played a very unique role in human history. They were beings, typically humans, that were used to personify and represent a nation as a whole. They've been widely popular for well over 500 years. With that said, national personifications are used to simplify complex domestic and international issues to make them more relatable and understandable to individuals. It was also relatively hard to keep the world informed about all the changing leaders before the information age. Being that most of the world probably didn't even care about the American president James Garfield back in the 1880s, so why would they care to learn it? I mean, but a great way to represent America as a whole for the ages was giving America a symbol, a national personification. Though today we don't see it as much due to the fact that we live in the information age, the national personifications haven't died yet. But today in the information age, you'll typically see leaders themselves representing their nations due to the fact that people have access to the information and that seems to be much more valuable to us than it has been in past generations. So what I wanted to do is dedicate this video talking about some of the national personifications. So with that said, let's get started. The United States personifications are Uncle Sam, Lady Liberty, Columbia, and occasionally the Bald Eagle. The United Kingdom's personifications are Britannia, John Bull, a lion, and occasionally a bulldog. I also took the liberty of breaking down Great Britain to show you guys some of the other national personifications each kingdom has. So England is typically represented in itself by John Bull, Wales is typically represented by Dame Wales, and Scotland is typically represented by Jock Thompson. The Canadian personifications are a Mountie, Johnny Canuck, and he's kind of cool because Americans sometimes call Canadians Canucks. And Johnny Canuck, from what I could read, was a little bit rebellious towards America. There's also Mother Canada, and on occasion a moose or a beaver. Some national personifications of Australia are the little boy from Manly, and on occasion a kangaroo with boxing gloves, which is extremely intimidating. That's probably my favorite one so far, you have to admit, that's, that's pretty cool. Next up is some personifications of Germany. They have Germania, Bismarck, Armenius, occasionally a bear, and typically any gentleman wearing a pickle hubel. Pickle hubel. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Pretty fancy. A personification of Sweden is Mother Siva. Singapore's national personification is probably one of the best there ever was. It's a merlion. A mer freaking lion. It's exactly what it sounds. It's a cross between a mermaid and a lion. Some personifications of Brazil are a Figi da Repubblica, Pedro II, and occasionally a macaw. Some personifications of India are Bharat Mata, occasionally a Gandhi-like figure, and a Bengal tiger, which is pretty awesome, India. I gotta hand it to you. Personification of Norway is Ola Nordman. Some personifications of New Zealand are Zilinda and a kiwi, which is freaking adorable. I just want to hold one forever. Who wouldn't want to hold one of those forever? I mean, seriously, it's so cute. Some personifications of the Netherlands are the Dutch Maiden and a lion or a dairy cow. Personifications of the Philippines are Juan de la Cruz and Lapu Lapu. Some personifications of Mexico are El Cerro, La China Probima, and occasionally Montezuma, which is, is that's awesome. Montezuma is definitely one of my favorite people in history. Personification of Denmark is Olgir the Dane, who's Viking, and that's pretty awesome in itself. A personification of Serbia is Mother Serbia. Personification of Bulgaria is Mother Bulgaria. So many mothers. It just seems that everybody just has a mother. Everybody. Who would have thought? Personification of Finland is the Finnish Maiden. Some national personifications of Japan are a samurai, and occasionally a Matarasu, who is a Shinto god. Some personifications of Italy are Italia Torita, and occasionally Caesar or Augustus. And who wouldn't want a Roman emperor representing them? A personification of Portugal is Zé Povino. Some national personifications of France are Mariana, Napoleon, and a Gaelic rooster. And lastly, some national personifications of Ireland are Herbinia and Grace O'Malley. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about these. And I hope I managed to bring up your country. But if I didn't, please do leave a comment of what you know of your national personification. And like I said, I'd love to make a video about it down the road. And before I leave, I'd like to do a call out to the channel Pletherons. They recently allowed me to do a voiceover for some of their videos, taking some of the facts in my videos and reinventing it. And if you'd like to check out that video, please click the link here. And if you'd like to check out their channel, go right here. And make sure you guys leave some comments. 
And for my more daring audience members, there's actually an anime made by Japan called Hitalia, which I came across in the mix of this research, and it's basically a whole anime dedicated to joking around with national personifications. So if you like this type of stuff, um, you might want to check it out. It's a bit goofy, but it's interesting. And I forgot to add that I hope you all had a very wonderful holiday season. I wish you the best in this following year. And by the way, this video's taking forever to edit. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. My name's Dale, you're watching The Factoid, and remember, never stop learning. Thank you.